Hey YouTube, what is up everybody? How's it going? This is your homeboy, Seth and Donna Four. Um, what to talk about? What? This is the thing. This is how I see it. Um, if let's see, who's a better martial arts? Um, Sony Chiba or Bruce Lee? Sony Chiba or Bruce Lee? They're both pretty good martial arts back in the day. I mean, Br Sony Chiba and Bruce Lee both did um, their own stunts. They fight dirty in their movies. Where Sony Chiba, he's just an actor. Where Bruce Lee, he's an actor too. And a martial arts. But the thing it is, Bruce Lee studies Kung Fu. And where Son Chiba practices the Japanese arts. Japanese martial arts. So Bruce Lee's uh Tao Chikundo against Japanese karate or Bishido. However you want to say it. With, with Sony Chiba. Because to me, that's what Sony Chiba is. He's Bushido. He's the way of the warrior. He he fights like one. He trains like one in his movements. Bruce Lee, he was just a brawler. No strings attached. In his movies. So, if... I want to say he would probably win. This is how I see it. You know, they'll be in an alley facing each other. Sony and Chiba, Chiba getting his karate stance type pose. He'll have like one, one hand up. He'll have like one hand down. And then get ready to fight. And then... Uh, Bruce Lee be like this, you know, and this. It'd be more like a Philly shell movement, but be more like ready and relax at the same time. And they'll just clash at each other, you know. Sony Chiba will go in with a front kick, a front snap kick. Bruce Lee would do a low parry. And then Bruce Lee would do a high round kick to Sony Chiba's head and actually hits it. And then after Sony Chiba gets hit in the head with Bruce Lee's kick, then Sony Chiba would turn around and do like flurry of reverse punches at Bruce Lee's face and turn around and try to mobilize him and grab his wrist or he could try to do a wrist float wrist lock joint flip on Bruce Lee Bruce Lee counters it and lands on his feet and gets out of it and does a reverse movement with him onto Sony Chiba and then after that Sony Chiba gets out of his wrist lock a reversal throw and then he gets out of the hold and then he gets back up. Then he starts doing a flurry of kicks and with some spinning back fist movements and turn around and do a side kick on Bruce Lee and actually lands it. And then Bruce Lee kind of gets knocked down from it, but he gets back up. And then he starts, Bruce Lee starts doing his boxing stance 
body stance is moving around on his feet like Muhammad Ali does. And then, which I call it the shuffle footwork. And then, Bruce Lee would go in with a fury of jabs on him. A fury is a back fist. Bruce Sonny Chiba bought the, bought the second one, but not the third back fist. And then, Sonny Chiba turned around and hit Bruce Lee. Get him distracted by throwing a punch where Bruce Lee blocks, dodges the hit, and then Sonny Chiba will go in for an uppercut. Then he'll grab him behind Bruce Lee's neck, and then Sonny Chiba will try to elbow him to the face, and then try to punch Bruce Lee to the face, and Bruce Lee gets out of Sonny Chiba's hold. Bruce Lee turns around, goes in for attack, a tackle move on Sonny Chiba. Bruce Lee throws Sonny Chiba on his back with a wrestling move. And then he'll get on top of Sonny Chiba and just start well on him with some ground and pound. And then after that, Bruce Lee would basically win. That's just how I see it. If you don't know, that's just how I see it. Bruce Lee would win over Sony Chiba any day. I don't care what anybody says out there. There, there are many people out there saying, who would win against Muhammad Ali against Bruce Lee in a fight? Well... Muhammad Ali was going to go, go up against a pro wrestler and all about fighting with no no rules. Where anything goes. But the thing of it is, Bruce Lee, I think, I think he could, you know, if them two were still alive and if they would have still done movies, <laughs> if they would actually put in a match, put a match together, I mean this. Put a match together in the ring. Japanese martial arts versus a Chinese kung fu, kung fu, kung fu martial arts. Japanese martial arts versus a kung fu martial arts. You see it in the movies too many times where Bruce Lee always, the Chinese man always comes out on top. But to me, with those two fighting each other, I think it'd be more of a draw. But this way on how I describe I declare him as Bruce Lee as the winner. But if it was a real fight with the knowledge that Bruce Lee knows and the knowledge that Sonny Chiba knows and to the systems of fighting, then I would probably say it would be a draw in, in the match. Because they were good martial artists. You know, they were two of my favorite martial artists of the 80s area. Even though I wasn't born around that time. I mean, I was born in 87, but I was still a baby. You know, 80s area, I mean, they, they had some good freaking movies. Good action movies. They had some good story meaning behind those action movies. You know, they had a story plot in those movies. Where nowadays movies, movies nowadays, you know, yeah, they're okay to watch, but it's just like, they don't have no story behind it. And that's the thing, you know, I like movies that have a meaning behind it, and that has a story behind it, that I can keep my interest in it, and, you know, it's got to have a good, the character has to be good in it, whoever plays, the actor has to be good in it, and whoever plays the main character, the main lead, and then, then we'll just go from there. So, that's what I think on a person, how a movie should be, it should be good with 
um, a good story, a good, um, with good actors in it. It shouldn't, you know, just be like, okay, well, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And then make it into a movie and turn around and end up, you know, okay, bam, it's a movie. Even though it don't have no storyline to it. How about this one movie, uh, I can't remember, but it was supposed to be about this famine, hmm, Murama Yashi, the famous samurai, he wrote the book of Five Rings, and I made a movie about him, and I didn't like on how the movie was filmed. And it didn't have, it didn't have a good, I mean, it had good action in it, don't get me wrong. But, it didn't have a story behind it. So, it's like, okay, well, what's the story? You know, all I see is a bunch of dudes sword fighting, I'm not really understanding it. So... When you do stuff like that in a movie, it's like, it's not even really a movie. It's just a fight, a big huge fight scene. So, it's like with me, I like a movie that tells a good story. I don't like a movie that has a meaning behind it. No, I don't know every movie has a meaning behind it, but some movies, they are just pointless. That's in my opinion um, on things. But, if you can if you can get, um, a hint on what the movie is trying to tell you, then it'll be a good movie. But if it ain't, if it ain't gonna tell you anything, then why waste your energy trying to watch it? So, that's all I'm saying right now. Seth McDonald 4 signing out. I hope you liked this video and my topic on what I think about what's what area are good movies to watch? What generation? Um, my generation is the 80s movies. They were they didn't really have much back then to work with, and because right now all all the movies that are being made is all with 3D effect and computerized stuff and everything, and it's just that it just makes it like fake. And it's like, the, let's see, what one was it, where Arnold Schwarzenegger fought himself. It was in Terminator, but I can't remember which one. I think it was called Terminator Salvation, I believe. Where Arnold Schwarzenegger fought, him young, fought his younger self in the movie as the Terminator. And... It, it was just too fake. And it was just like... And I could tell that the 3D effect... The 3D animation was just fake. And it was just like... That part, I didn't see no sense into making. But the rest of the movie got you. But it was just that one little scene in that movie that I just didn't like about where he was fighting his younger self. Now, the one with Jet Li in it, the one with Jet Li in it, it was like, like a 90s movie. Well, he, they did it really good because they made it where it had a point behind it. It had a point behind it where it talked about parallel time, time plus par parallel time travel, you know, multiverse time travel, you know, different time zones, different parallel universes, you know, Seeing more than one you, you know, one one of you could be gay, one of you could be straight, one of you could be bisexual, uh, one of you could be a transgender, one of you could be a martial arts, one of you couldn't be, you know, and stuff like that. And it was just like, okay, you know, this is really interesting. And then it caught my eye because at first I thought it was just going to be another 
martial art kung fu fighting movie where it was just going to be non-stop action. No. It had a storyline behind it. And that's what I like. I like movies that have a storyline behind it. Have a meaning behind it. Not just action, action, action. You know, there are some movies I do watch of action, but it's like I said. It's got to have a storyline behind it. And if it has a lot of action, it's got to have a meaning behind the action. That's all I'm saying right now. 7 on 4, so I am. Peace.